Now, if you love trail cameras and the information that they can give you and all the great intel that they can all year long, then this video is for you. And I'm gonna detail by month the best activities that I'm taking place with my trail cameras out in the woods. We're in the, in the woods all the time. I'm out in the woods for client parcels on you know uh, 90 days a year, whatever it is. And then at the same time, we're shooting videos at least 20 days out of the year. And then of course, hunting. And so we're out on the property all the time and a lot of our activities revolve around our access trail cameras, whether we're collecting B-roll for uh, the videos that we put in or just finding out that intel that is so important month by month, we revolve around trail cameras a lot for the strategies that we employ for whitetails and it's not just for hunting, it's buck ID and there's many things and it starts with January every year. And January is so important and that's a great trail camera month because I'm specifically looking for buck ID. I'm looking for when I believe that buck is still alive and he's made it through the year and I rely on my trail cameras the most for that because let's face it, a lot of the bucks that actually shed their antlers that are making it through the next year, if you have a great fall property, then what I find is that you're not collecting a lot of those sheds. Now the exceptions are very large parcels, but we're dealing with 30 acres of cover right here. We're trying to spread that cover out into the valleys and the switchgrass that we have out here. In fact, we saw a pair of pheasants today, um, hen and rooster, and they were taken off. It was awesome. They were, we were right under our feet. So it was pretty cool to see that. And because of the switchgrass out there, we're creating that structure. And so the trail cameras can give us intel for anything that we're looking at all different kinds of wildlife but when it specifically comes to making sure that a buck made it through the hunting season then i'm relying on that january trail cam id because it's right after the season ends that's also a great time to scout that's a great time to still capitalize on those buck patterns because there's still a lot of times in that hunting mode and that type of intel that type of sign whether it's rubs or scrapes and deer sign overall is very important even more important than say February, March. Now February, if you're really into shed hunting and you want to make sure that you're going out at a time of peak timing for shed timing, meaning that you're not going out around here uh, first of February, I would guess that the majority of bucks are still holding both their antlers. And then by the end of February, there's still a percentage that are holding both, but we've passed that peak time for shed drop and so during February, a lot of times I'm looking for pretty pictures of bucks, of course, buck ID still, but I'm really looking for that shed timing in my area so that we know when we really want to get back into some bedding areas and maybe look at some food sources that have does bedding next to it and it's fairly invasive, then I can look at a trail camera around those outer edges and know, hey, the bucks have dropped their antlers. And that's a great way to make sure that you're going out at a time where you're not spooking the deer off a small property somewhere else for them to drop their sheds. Uh, trail cameras can tell you a lot in February as it relates to that. Now in March, it's an interesting time during, during March. Uh, March is for really winter identification and winter habitat identification. Now a lot of times if you have a great fall property, that does not mean that you have a great winter property. So by the time that deer are getting herded together and they're moving into those areas of late winter, uh, March is going to tell you a lot about that property. And what I like to look at with my trail cameras is if you're collecting a lot of bucks and a lot of deer at that time during March and your trail cam pictures are actually going up, that's not necessarily a good thing. I really like to see in March, you know, our property is really winding down. Those deer are going back typically to their summer range by that time, they're, they're getting close to it. Um, at the end of winter, and that's where I find a lot of their sheds are dropped, a lot of their antlers are dropping. And it really lets you know, is my property a winter habitat? And I'll give you an example. There's properties out there that have a high percentage of conifer on them, and a high percentage of spruce, fir, cedar, red cedar, whatever it might be, white cedar uh, up north. And, and those trail cameras really start to fill up in January, February, March. And it goes back to a lot of the timing that I talk about the best time to have deer on your property, bucks moving into your property, deer in general, is during October, November, December. Any other time of the year, it's not really doing you any good. Yeah, you might be able to help their health if you have standing food plots, but you're not protecting them. You're not advancing to the next age class. You're not working on sex ratios. You're not working on adequate buck age structure. And certainly, if deer are coming in January, February, March, and your hunting season doesn't extend to those dates, or especially during the summertime, you can't balance the population, you can't shoot deer, you can't uh, raise or lower the, 
the population during the off season. It really only matters during that hunting season. So March is a great time to analyze your habitat and say, you know, when was my habitat actually peaking? Is it peaking right now? Am I getting a lot of pictures of deer? And that might not, not necessarily be a good thing. And then if you're not getting pictures in February, March, or April, um, with, the, with that March being that tenor, center time slot, then that is not necessarily a bad thing if you're not getting it during that time. You want to see your, your deer numbers sometimes dwindling during that time, and that tells you a lot about your potential of your fall habitat. Now, April, I really like if there are deer moving through the property, and wherever the deer are moving, and this is in-person scouting and trail cam, it's a great time to find that connection of trail systems and where those deer actually like to move, prefer to move, between bedding areas you might be creating in the future, food sources you might be creating, travel corridors. You're not trying to reinvent the wheel when it comes to habitat management and habitat creation. In fact, you can easily over improve your habitat so that there's random movement on the property, deer attracted to all portions of the property, and that's not a good thing because then you can't step foot on the property during the hunting season without a pretty good guess that you're not gonna spook any deer. So the more you define specific locations, and you match that definition of movement to the existing deer movements on the land, then that is a very good thing and that can really take place in April. What's nice about April is you don't have spring green up yet typically. You can still see the deer movements, whether it's deer movements from winter extending into the fall. You know if they're going across this hillside that they're gonna travel on this deer trail. You know that they're, if they're going from point A to point B through this inside corner, that they're gonna be moving through this little step down of elevation, or they're gonna move across this land bridge, or they're gonna hit this island out in the swamp, connecting features that you're trying to install on your land. So you can really pinpoint and flag those. Actually, two days ago, I was with my son Sam on Saturday, and we were down by Madison on a client property where it's uh, 1st of April today and we were flagging all the deer trails that we're using to connect. So we flagged about a mile and a half of deer trails that connected about 19 tree stands to four water holes and multiple food plots. And we were able to connect that all together because there's no spring green up. The trails are literally, we were walking on pellets on top of pellets in some locations, there's so many uh, deer trails, but those are all swallowed up during the summertime and the summer vegetation. So really good time, April, Look at trail cameras. How are those bucks moving through the land? How are those deer in general moving through the land? And then transferring that to your habitat improvements that you're starting to install and making sure that it all connects. Now, May is an interesting uh, season. Bucks are just starting to grow their velvet and their antlers, and you can't quite ID them yet unless there's a certain rip in an ear, certain mark on an animal, specific whitetail that you're looking at. And I don't like to leave my trail cameras out 365 days a year, but I don't mind leaving them out about 335 days. And what that means is that I'm taking my trail cameras out in May. Um, there's methods you can clean everything up, making sure the latches are good still. You're taking the batteries out. You're letting that camera dry out inside the house in, in uh, room temperature. And what I found, I, we have a trail camera we've left out on uh, public land. It was down in Ohio for 365 days. One of our excess trail cameras was still taking video of, it, of us when we walked up to it 365 days later in the middle of October. So I can trust that we can leave these cameras out, but at the same time, I don't think it's a bad idea to give them a break in May. And that's the one period of the time where I've already ID'd, I've already figured out deer trails, I've already figured out my winter habitat situation, it's past shed drop. The antlers are just for, for me. I can't ID bucks. And so May is a great time to potentially give your cameras a break. We still have 16 in the woods right now and I'm gonna leave them through April. I wanna see all this movement and it's every year we get a buck that's still holding the end of March and uh, early April. And it might even have both antlers on. We had one on March 29th last year, a nice three-year-old. And so we can Take those trail cameras out. May is at one time, the one month out of the year that I do not have my trail cameras in. Now, June is where it starts to get a little exciting. And, you know, I'm excited. I'm out in the woods all the time. Like I said, I love scouting. Had the binoculars today because we're hoping to find some sheds. But when it comes to June, that is that time when it starts getting to mid-June, especially if they're larger, more mature box, you can start to visibly ID box if they're still on your land. And I love June for that month because you can actually get excited. Typically, let's say if we have six to eight bucks that are four years old, older on our lands coming into the property, 
only one or two of those are actually on there during the summertime and they're just on here infrequently because we're a part of their fall movement, we're a part of their fall pattern, their fall territory, but they're just letting us know during the summer that you know, you're not a part of my summer territory, my summer pattern, but I will be back in the fall. And so I love getting those occasional pictures that we do of those growing mature bucks and you can start to ID them in June. Now July is a great time because, you know, again, I'm thinking whitetail and I'm strategizing about whitetail 365 days a year. And part of that huge strategy is I want to hunt the weather when it comes to the fall. And I want to hunt those weather patterns. Those same weather patterns that move bucks during the fall and get them on their feet are the same weather patterns that get mature bucks on their feet during the summertime. July can tell you a lot. So if you're in a wooded area, if you're heavy timbered wilderness areas, if the mature bucks you're after, like in my case, a lot of times they're feeding on someone else's land that I can't go scout during the summertime. We do get to see about half our bucks in the area just by driving around within a mile to two miles. And yes, those bucks are typically right around a mile to mile and a half, sometimes even two miles from this location where we shoot them in the fall from where they reside during the summer. They want those open summer food sources, open summer woods. They want beans, alfalfa production, and they want a completely set of different habitat circumstances during the summer that they do in the fall. But July is a great time, and even when it rolls into August and September, for watching those weather patterns, watching when you're actually getting mature bucks on your trail cameras, and learning from that. Don't just say, hey, I have a mature buck and he's telling me that he's gonna be back here in the rut. What I like you to do is take it one step further and say, I have a mature buck that's gonna be back here in the rut. And because I've been practicing the, these weather patterns that get mature bucks on their feet and push them to their feet during the summertime, I know the day in the morning or evening that he's gonna be on my land during the middle of the rut because he's told me I'm a part of his pattern. I've studied the weather patterns. I know when those bucks are gonna be on their feet. Typically, when you have temperatures going down, you have conditions clearing, sometimes there's a good barometric pressure for that, sometimes there's not. But when the weather conditions are clearing, it could be in between rainstorms, it could be that you're dropping from a high of 79 down to 69, and then in two days it's gonna drop down to 57. You still hunt that 69, 70 degree period because there's been a 10 degree drop. You still want to watch for those during July. You still want to pay attention to your trail camera cameras and say, and a lot of times, I know the extra trail cameras and quality trail cameras, they're putting the, the temperature right on the trail camera. And so you can see exactly when they're moving. You can extend that to those same weather patterns during the hunting and July is a great time for that. Now, believe it or not, August is a time where those bucks should still not be on your land. They should no, still not have shifted on your land. There's so many people out there, clients, hunters, people that I talk to, where they wonder where the, the bucks that they had on their trail cameras during the summertime actually went. And again, the bucks need a very set, um, specific set of uh, circumstances and habitat needs during the summertime and that greatly differs from the fall. They want that high stem count. They want very thick cover. They want fall food. Alfalfa stemmy and dormant had its last cutting. Beans are turning brown. So a lot of times they'll shift their habitat about a mile and that's what we see around here. Could be a greater, a much greater length in big wooded areas, wilderness areas where they're, the quality food sources are far and few between and quality cover and uh, thick habitat is far and few between. August and in the, as it goes into September, but August is not the time for a census. Uh, very, very poor time because if mature bucks are on your land, that's a bad thing. That typically means you do not have fall habitat and you're not going to influence a herd in August or September. You're only going to influence them in October, November, December. So August is the time where you're looking at those trail cam photos and if you're getting a lot of pictures of a lot of deer, a lot of mature bucks at that time, there's a lot of cause for worry because typically where those bucks are at in August are not going to be out in the fall. Terrible time for a census and then as it rolls in September, you're really watching those, those key features. Now September truly represents the pivot point in the whitetail woods. That's a time where mature bucks, especially towards the end of September, early October, where bucks should be coming onto your land and on poor properties, deer are leaving your land. Pivot point is a point in September, that pivot point is not an accurate census of your property in any way, disregard it. Don't follow any of that advice for that because when it comes to September, your property is either gonna go up in quality or it's gonna go down in quality. Now that quality could relate to hunting pressure, it could relate to fall food, it could relate to an overabundance of summer food. 
But bottom line is your property is typically going to change and it's going to get better or worse. Your trail cameras can tell you a lot about that. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that split brow buck that starts poking his head in on the property at the end of September. The split G2 buck that we has just little G2s from last year. He was a nice three or four year old, uh, broken time towards the end of the season. We have a 10 point that we think is a three year old. He should be coming back as a four year old. So we're watching for all those bucks coming back and that's that late September time where they're coming back onto the property and that's that pivot point where it tells you, hey, I have some great fall cover. I'm starting to attract the bucks. I've created that buck vacuum that we've talked about in another video where you're sucking in those bucks because very few properties in the whitetail woods, I'd say less than 10%, attract the daylight focus of mature bucks on a consistent basis. And I want my trail cameras in September to start to tell me that, that I'm doing a good job with the habitat. I'm attracting those pivot point bucks that are shifting over from their summer habitat, and I'm doing a good job. Now when it comes to October, now we're getting really exciting times because that's really getting into the bulk of your hunting season. If you have a great property, you're gonna see mature bucks focusing on it all three months of the, the season, not just during the rut. And poor properties are just rut properties. You should be able to poke your head in. And, and if you're waiting until you know, December uh, to attract bucks on your land, you've already, you can't be a herd influencer. You're, you're taking just what's left over at that point. So October is really impo important. And that's a time where we're looking at the hot stand locations for specific bucks that we've already identified are alive, we already know their patterns from the year before. We already have those trail cam photos from October, November, December, the year before. We know where they're cruising. We know where they're traveling. And when that sign pops up and we start getting those trail cam photos of those specific box near specific stand locations. And on this property, I'm talking about this one right here. We have a stand high, stand low. We have water hole, mock scrape. We get to see it all. Last year, the split brow buck was on this property, I believe October 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, during shooting hours, morning and evening. And we have stands to capture them. We have stands to hit them on at, with that movement. And so you can bet, and, I, and this might be because of the importance of that split brow buck to me, we believe it might be six this year. I might have one of the extra cell cameras in this location, one high, one low, because he makes this whole circuit like the Diego buck a few years ago. We know what stands we can kill him out of, and we're gonna watch for that, that movement. But when we see these specific stand locations with trail cameras next to those stand locations, then we're gonna target those hot stands during October. I don't care if it's October 5th, October 18th, or the end of October, we're starting to get to pre-rut. A hot stand is a, is a stand where a, a buck is currently moving through, and you know that it's gonna be a good stand because you've seen them with your trail cameras. It is a little bit unfair because you can look at them with the trail cameras and know he's there, but that also matches the sign, the rubs, and the scrapes. And that's why and I, I completed a video just a couple weeks on this ago on this where I talk about having a, a trail camera and a lot of your trail cam setups or your stand location setups. So specifically for this, we keep, we, we never have a buck look at this trail camera over my shoulder right here. I have to stand in this log to change the card. The side of the camera's profiled. Bucks, you just, it's seven feet up in the air from them looking at it from down here. So they just are never spooked from this trail camera and this supports two stand locations. So there's so much. Let October tell you the hot stand location that you should be sitting on for a specific buck. And that's why a lot of times, about half the years, I have my bucks before the end of October because I'm specifically hunting stands that I know bucks are there and I know bucks are present and we've known that they're there and you can go in and hunt them in October. November is an is a interesting time because that's where we get a lot of our B-roll footage of bucks, mature bucks are moving through the property back and forth. You know, that would be the peak of that movement. Obviously, bucks are moving a lot more miles during the rut than outside of the rut. But when it comes time to having your trail cameras out in November, I'm trying to get pretty pictures. I'm trying to get B-roll. I want to know those bucks are on the land, obviously, and that they're moving through. But if I've done my job from January to October, I already know those bucks are going to be there. I already know when the sign pops up they're going to be there. And it's not that I don't want my trail cameras in the woods in November. It's just that the importance of the entire strategy of whitetail has already been set. My game plan's already been set. My, trail, my uh, tree stands have already been set based on movements in April and from movements I've seen the years before. So everything's all set when you get to November. That's the time where you get to play. That's the time where you know there's bucks there. You know there's bucks at stand locations. You're going in and, and all your stand locations are working for you if you've uh, set them up well. November is a great time though because most people start it hunting their land sometime in September and October, really take a hard critical look at the assessment of how your hunting 
practices are working for you or not. For example, you see mature bucks on the property. You go hunt stand A, B, or C, and then you look at your trail cameras and you're, and you're noticing that that buck movement, mature buck movement, deer movement in general dries up. You can really take a hard assessment and I urge you to be critical. Really look at yourself as, you know, you learn something every year. That's the way I look at it. Every property I go to, it doesn't matter how many dozens of properties I'm on. Every year I learn something on every single property. You can never stop learning. You never stop learning during the hunting season. And one of the best ways you can learn for the most critical factor of the hunting season, the lowest hole in the bucket of hunting and herd management is how you hunt your land, how much uh, pressure you put on your land. Are you spooking deer? And your trail cameras can tell you so much by the time November rolls around. I get a lot of client feedback where we saw a lot of deer in September, a few in October, not much in November, hardly anything in December. And then we're out there in February and there's pellets and new rubs and scrapes and tracks everywhere in beds. We see deer because it's the first time that they've allowed their land more than a week or two without any hunting pressure. And the deer responded to it because they had great habitat improvements and they came back. So deer will move off the property and the mature bucks are the first ones to leave. So take a good hard look, see how your hunting patterns are working for you during November. Make sure that you're peaking November, peaking in November, the, the mature buck movement and the deer movement. And November is a critical month for trail cameras as it relates to assessing your hunting ability, how much pressure you're putting on the plots and then how many deer are you ultimately spooking off your land. Again, you should be peaking in November. That's the time where you can influence the herd the most, and it shouldn't be your worst time of the year, obviously, and of course. And again, it goes back to if your only time you're seeing mature bucks is middle of November, there's a severe problem on your land, especially as it relates to uh, daylight. There's a lot of things that need to be changed. Now, what's great about December is you still have your trail cameras out, and I'll talk about batteries in a second when you should be replacing those all year long. But December is a great time of the year. I shot one of my bucks this year with a muzzle loader during the secondary rut. You can count on if you've really assessed when the peak rut, and that's a lot of times when your scrapes are drying up, but you're seeing a lot of movement. Like around here, we get a, a ton of movement um, early November. And then every, the scrapes dry up for a few days, say the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th of November and then the bucks are back at it. But we would say that that peak is right around early November to the 10th of November around here for breeding. That's the same window every single year. That's not gonna change by the moon, by the weather, anything. The bucks are breeding the does. The does are receptive at the same time every year. But then you could fast forward 28 to 30 days and that's when that secondary rut takes place. And that's when I shot my buck um, during that secondary rut this year. One deer in the primary rut and then one deer in the secondary rut. And your trail cameras will tell you that. Two years ago, we had really nice buck footage of uh, just the top of the antlers running through, but you heard the grunts on the, on the trail cameras, on the excess trail cameras, and the mic picked it up, but, and that was early December. You see the scrapes start to open at that time, and you can even have a third rut um, into early January if you have does that haven't been bred, especially the fawns that haven't been bred. And, and so, and especially if you don't have a lot of mature bucks on your land during the rut, then really look for that December period and those Jan early January period. Those bucks really might be ranging out a lot further than you think. That secondary rut on overpopulated properties is sometimes a lot better property to hunt um, at that time than it is during the primary rut just because there's way too many does and bucks haven't resided on the land. But boy, when it gets into that secondary rut, they're ranging far and, and wide. In fact, the buck I shot, we had pictures of them on this property, the video, but he was actually on the property three quarters of a mile away most of the time. And then he was over here during that period of time uh, the most. And that's when we first started seeing him and uh, was able to capitalize on that. You can also find those leftover bucks. Again, if you're only planning your, your hunting season around November, December, say with a standing bean field, now you're, you're kind of at the end of the game. Um, there's a lot of bucks that have already been taken. You haven't had a chance to influence the herd. You haven't had a chance to raise or lower buck age structure, improve sex ratios. And if all the deer are arriving in December, then you haven't had a chance to actually um, affect the population, whether you're reducing or increasing the population of the deer in your area and your ability to use doe tags. December is a great time. You can ID those leftover bucks, possibly hunt them during the late archery season. And of course, really look at trail cameras to identify exactly when your secondary rut is taking place. I believe that secondary rut 
is one of the most missed times in the whitetail woods every single year. It's a strong period of time to harvest bucks, to target specific bucks that are left over in that early December period in most of the Midwest. Now changing batteries. If I have my cameras out 11 months out of the year, obviously I might have to change some batteries, especially when we're running 10 to 15 second HD videos that really swallows up the batteries. What I found is that I'm putting most cameras out in June and I'm typically, I do not need on the Exodus anyways, use eight lithium batteries. I'm not changing those trail camera batteries till sometime in October. My cameras are located next to my stand locations so I'm bringing a pocket full of batteries and a card. I'm changing the battery at that time, maybe at the end of the hunt or before it begins for an evening hunt, whatever it might be. I don't want to leave my scent around that movement that we're watching. But after the deer move through, if it's off to the side behind a log, then I can change it too. But that's that first time. I'm putting my cameras out in June sometime, mid-June. We're making a lot of our mock scrapes around the end of June, early uh, July. So that's important for us too. And then, and that's, so that's another key feature. We're really watching those mock scrapes when they first begin. It's amazing how many of our bucks hit those early mock scrapes in the end of June and in early July. We're just scraping them out or making them. Putting the batteries in for the first time then, changing them again in October, and then I'm changing them again at the end of the season or after the season in January. And that makes sure that with three sets of batteries that we can run HD video for 11 months out of the year and not run out of our batteries because all our camera locations have a purpose. They have a purpose as it relates to the January to December year round management of our trail cameras and our entire trail camera strategy. We don't want any of them to run out and we're fortunate this will be the fourth year we're using excess trail cameras. They have a five year warranty. We found we've had no hunting season failures. They're a great trail camera company. And again, if you like all these strategy videos, I urge you to subscribe to the channel. Um, we expect to put out about close to 200 videos this year and we're on that pace right now And I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you enjoy these year-round trail cam strategies I love trail cameras. I've been operating them since the end of the 90s and um, And now they last so much longer. They give us so much more in Intel and I hope you're taking advantage of it every month of this year